I. Oh, did you did you just now start recording? No, I just now stopped. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I mean, you don't mind you don't mind having the stuff I covered so far recorded. Oh no, no. Okay, and I was just thinking there might be some point at which she says some things that you know she wouldn't want recorded. So I thought I better stop it. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the more personal stuff, if it can help somebody, you know. That's how I feel, Alicia. But uh, every once in a while, I have a student that. I have to go ask the IT people to cut off the last five minutes. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's too complicated. Mm -hmm. But no, I and I, and again, Alicia, I just think that mother-child bond is one of the major experiences where we get thrown back mm -hmm. into our not only awareness of the most basic stuff, mm -hmm. but the fact that culture should be based on this. But obviously, look at what happened in the Enlightenment. They wiped it out deliberately. And we're going to be a blank slate and everything is socially constructed. And then you have the dualists. What the hell? That has nothing to do with the bonding of a kid, mm -hmm. right? I mean, a mom who acted on absolute reason would be like, a, a bad mom let's put it that way mm -hmm. right i mean everything you do with a kid i mean you can't will that everybody nurse their kid mm. you can't will you know i mean it just they wiped it out and then they try to piece it back together yeah. and it's just not going to work you just have to say the enlightenment brought us a lot, but in terms of our foundational philosophy, it was a disaster. And it was going to end up where we are right now. Yeah, it only, it brought physical gain, physical progress. The, the, you know, progress as humankind, as humanity, it did not make us better people, so. Our basic drives are there every time a kid is born, yeah. right? You start at zero. I think that's, then, oh, go ahead. They get molded into a culture. Yeah. But some cultures really aggravate fear and com competitiveness and trying to trigger people's fears to get them to want to be greedy and to compete with each other and to never think they have enough. I mean, a culture can stimulate that. And that's not gonna be long-term for the good of the culture, right? If a culture wants to be stable, it's gotta, it's gotta mold kids to want to be middle-class and to want to work to get there and then to want to share once they're past that so that everybody is fl flourishing. Right. But we don't do that. Like we tap the competitive adversarial fear of not having enough money buttons like crazy. Mm -hmm. And then the pleasure one, you should condition people to want to tie sex to a long-term relationship, to a history, to somebody you'd want to be the parent of your child. And we don't, like all that advertising detaches sex from context, right? Mm -hmm. It's sexier if she's, you know, if her body is such that she wouldn't be able to deliver a baby because her hips are too small, you know, mm -hmm. she's sexier if she's not attached, you know, it has nothing to do with her, her character, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, it's just crazy, Alicia, we're, we're feeding all of our worst, most primitive anti- cultural anti-civilization drives mm -hmm. but in the enlightenment i mean it's a product of the blank slate and starting over because you you all of a sudden you're not paying attention to how you really need to educate these drives because you're claiming that we can wipe it all clean and we can remold it mm -hmm. and yeah and you know in another week or so, we'll go with the empiricists who obviously are trying to start in exactly the opposite place. Mm 
which is every emotion is perfectly fine. We just have to study these things so we can poke and prod and treat people like herd animals. Yeah, they're like, right? if, if you if you want to include emotions, then we have to be able to, you know, uh, what was I going to say? We have to, I don't know. Not, well, not that we have to be able to prove them or validate them, but we have to be able to dissect them and understand how they work and what makes this emotion happen and this emotion happen and what happens because of these emotions and but yeah. then it also has to go with and what do you want like where do you want to go because you know in therapy the best, you know number one principle is positive self-regard right is that you affirm the the patient the client or whatever and so I was talking to this woman um, who lives upstairs, but she's going through a lot like I went through um, 20 years ago. She just got divorced, moved from Oregon here. She left her one kid, her other kids here. I mean, her whole life's collapsed, right? And um, she was just talking to me about trauma in her background and she's gonna go to a therapist and all this. But she says, you know, my husband, my ex-husband is also going to a therapist who's telling him he's just peachy keen and fine, right? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like sooner or later, somebody wants somebody to be able to say, that's not fine, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Does that make sense, Alicia? That absolutely makes sense. I. That's why I'm picky about who I take my children to see, you know? The schools are all like, oh, do you want to do school-based counseling? I'm like, no, I do not want to do school-based counseling. I tell us, like, if my kids are going to see somebody, they're going to see this person. Because, no, I don't want somebody just going to agree with them. Like, my husband went to see somebody at the Methodist Counseling Clinic about um, anger management and addiction to porn. And he came back home. He's like, oh, well, he said that I don't have any, you know, I don't have a problem with porn. I was like, yes, you do. Really? He said yeah. when oh you're going God. to when, when you're going to watch porn to the detriment of your marriage, of your entire family, that is a problem. I'm, it just is. Even if the only issue is that I don't like it, it's a problem. No, it's detaching sexual orgasm from a person, yeah. right? It's a classic case of separating mind and body, right? Yeah. And and that's so funny that 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 counselor is a classic case of empiricism gone crazy, yeah. right? Because yes, men can do that. It's just that, that we are creatures of culture. We are not just biological creatures and we cannot be happy. We cannot flourish unless we tie sexual drive to a long-term relationship where you're creating a life history with somebody and the history matters more than the orgasm yeah right they're, yeah they're taking the whole experience it's just a physical thing for them right they're like well, oh it, it, that's i mean and they'll literally say it's just a physical need it doesn't have anything to do with the person or it's an love appetite or don't love. You turn, yeah you turn it into an appetite or or yeah. it's edu it's educational it tells me what i need to do i was like no it does no. not it does not it's just but that is there that is therapy gone crazy the other yeah. side does that make yeah. sense oh yeah it makes sense oh my god those are two totally counterintuitive to say, you know extremes yeah you have cut over here and you have Porn is fine. And a Methodist counselor, right. you know, that, that's just awful. Yeah. Just awful. I, uh, oh, Alicia. Anyway. Well, I do support you in your mission. I hope you can find. Let's see. I had a student who went to Duke to do Christian based counseling. I don't know if you've ever heard of a program there, but. No, but I'm actually getting into that stuff with Dr. Miller right now. I haven't looked at our assignment for this for the next two weeks, but he was supposed to get